This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. got a service call that this office AC is not working. Um, I went downstairs as best as I can tell. It was hard to get to the thermostats. They, I made them all call. So, um, but there was one that was blank. I don't think it was this one. So we should have a call for cooling on this. So let's open up the electrical section right here and have a look in here and see what we can find. All right. I had no power in the electrical section. So let's start here at main power. Nothing, nothing, nothing. We do not have power coming into the disconnect. And look at that fuse. That thing looks like it was uh, overheating. So since we have no power, let's go ahead and check the fuses. Good, good, dead as expected. So we got a bad fuse right here. What caused it to go bad, I don't know. And it obviously tripped the main breaker too. Hopefully it's not a compressor. Um, so we got power turned off. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the contactor. And we're gonna check for direct shorts to ground at the contactor. This is our compressor contactor. This is our blower contactor. The condenser fan motor's off of this too. Take one of these guys, ground it out. Make sure it's a good ground it is. And then we're gonna check all the terminals to ground. Seeing if anything has a direct short to ground. Okay, we have no direct shorts to ground. So at this point, we're gonna spin the condenser fan motor, go downstairs, find the main breaker, turn it on, uh, see if I have, I don't know if I have 35 amp fuses, I'm probably gonna have to go get some. Let's see what the, uh, what size fuse, max fuse or breaker is 35 amp. I'm definitely not gonna have that. And I know I don't have 40s either because I use them all. Have, they might have another 35 amp unit up here. Let me go see if we have spare fuses in another one. All right, let's have a look here. On, 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 on. Tripped. This one's tripped. So you have to turn it off, turn it back on. Oh no, maybe that wasn't it, actually. It's this one. AC7 is tripped. So off on so now i need to go get some fuses i usually have a really good stock of fuses but i've been depleted this weekend because of problems so i had to do the home depot special but they had them 35 amp time delays they're ridiculously expensive but you know that's because it's the home depot right i guess i should add the reason why i'm buying fuses from home depot is because it's sunday september 8th and i'm not going to open a supply house for fuses so it has been a crazy weekend of service calls Every day, Friday I work till 10 or 11, and then Saturday I work till like 7 p.m. And it's been 100 and, Friday I think it was 100 and, I don't even know. <laughs> Thursday I know it was 115, 117. Friday I think it was 115. Saturday I think it was like 110. And then today I have no idea. It's all nasty and smoky though, because there's fires everywhere. Uh, we're gonna get these put in and then we'll probe up on the unit. I did spin the condenser fan motor, it spins. I see nothing that caused a fuse to blow at this point. Open up the blower section, blower motor spins, don't smell anything burnt. Um, we'll do an investigation. I've had disconnect switches going bad lately. I don't see any signs. Usually you can see some discoloration, but let me open this up and have a look in here. We'll see. If we look in there, Look at the back plate behind the Phillips screw. That one's kind of shiny silver. That one's dark and discolored. And that one's dark and discolored. We might have a bad connection in this disconnect switch. You can look at the knives. Now this is energized on the top now. But you can look at the knives and when the knives are making a bad connection. But usually you see it on the knives too, those. I don't see, so let me throw a fuse. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna change all the fuses, but right now, because I'm in the troubleshooting mode, I'm only gonna change the one fuse because I, I just don't wanna pull these out yet. So we're gonna change the one fuse, put that in, and then we'll probe up on the unit and then troubleshoot from there. But I'm just kind of visually inspecting, making sure there's no 
shorted wires. I mean, I don't see anything. We don't see any, usually disconnect switches that are bad too, you'll see discolored or burnt wires at the top. I don't necessarily see that. We'll also check all the tightness of the electrical connections. You can actually do that real quick. Flathead, this is an insulated flathead. Nice. 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 I don't see any problems, but it does kind of seem loose, huh? Let me try to tighten those Phillips. Let's see what happens with the Phillips. Nothing. Nothing. Ooh, man, those are kind of loose in there, but they're tight. They seem okay. All right, well, let me get my fuse in there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and probe up on this unit before we uh, get going. So, very important, make sure that when you turn on your, your smart probes, pressure transducers, whatever brand, they're zeroed out before you put them on the system. Notice that the high side pressure says 1.2 PSI, but it's sitting right here. Now, I happen to have Schrader depressors on here, so one thing is you gotta make sure those are mid-seated because there can be pressure stored in there. But they are, and we're still reading 1.2 PSI, so whatever app you're using, make sure you can zero them out. I happen to be using an app called Measure Quick. Um, okay, so we did that. Next is I had to profile the unit, so if we go right here, um, I go into profile, it needs to be a package unit. We're gonna set it up for five tons, R22, 10 to 12 sear, and it's a piston. Now, how do I know it's a five ton? Look right here. Carrier's data, when it says a six, it's a five. When it says a seven, it's a, se it's a six. Um, I just know that, so. Uh, I think if it says 12, it's a 10, I think. I, there, you gotta follow their little logic there. But So we're, we're profiled and we're ready, and then now we just need to connect all of our tools. I'm gonna connect them to the system, get all my clamps and my temperature probes too. We're all probed up. Temperature clamps, discharge suction liquid, low pressure, high pressure. We're gonna put the panel on and then let's hope nothing bad happens. All right, we are ready to go. I disconnected the R wire going to the transformer because I don't want the thermostat turning the unit on. I wanna push in the contactor and kind of test a few things. So turn this guy on. And then we're gonna check power to make sure we actually have three phase. And then uh, we will kind of go from there. So let's see, this is my, so we got 203. And then we're gonna have to go up to that blue wire up at the top because they're doing three phase jumping onto this guy. So let me get some stuff set up for that. So we know we had correct voltage from there and then from here. Okay, so 203 and 203. So we have three phase power at this unit now. Now we need to uh, put an amp clamp on the compressor. Now look at that, we're getting an error. Two flashes. That's for the heating circuit though. Shouldn't really affect us, but. Two flashes, limit switch fault. So not my concern right now, because we just need cooling. You can also see the heater's been disconnected because there's no uh, electrode wire going down this thing's just trash it needs to be cleaned it's probably got a bad heat exchanger too because it's turned off and usually i'll disable the unit when it's bad it's probably what happened i don't remember though all right um at this point we're going to push in the contactor Ooh, that compressor does not sound good it started but i need to get an amp clamp on there but it was not sounding good at all let's try that again with an amp clamp Oh, I mean, it's running. You have compression. Peninsula fan motor's running. Whew. All right, indoor blower motor's not running, though. So uh, I guess at this point, it's time to uh, jump the indoor blower motor. Again, I'm doing this because I don't want a full call for cooling. I want to control it so that way we can test current and do this slowly. Okay, so this should be the, you notice we have a dirty condenser, too. This should be the indoor blower motor. Let's see what happens. and it's not turning on the indoor blower motor, or it's not clicking. Should have started. Jumped out. Let's check voltage at the uh, indoor blower motor contact to see if we have 24 volts. I uh, had it connected to there and there was no power. I had to connect it to the wire. Okay, so indoor blower motor's running at 3.4 amps. That doesn't seem bad. 
Uh, we have 24 volts at the indoor blower motor contactor. Let's see what this guy's allowed to run. 5.8 amps for the indoor motor. And the compressors RLA are 17.3. Okay, well, at this point, it's time to go ahead and start this guy up. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. And then we're gonna connect the thermostat and let the thermostat do its magic. Let's see if the thermostat, actually, I think I gotta go downstairs and set the time on it. Um, so I'm just gonna jump it out from up here. Oh, nope, indoor blower motor started, so that's a plus. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and connect to Y1 and then we're gonna jump it out and uh, we'll test the thermostat's operation here in a few minutes. I've got my amp clamp on the compressor. There we go, we're running. Is that actually the compressor though? No, that's not the compressor that I'm testing. That's the compressor, there you go, that's much better. I think that was the condenser fan motor that I was testing. With that being said, 1.54. What is this condenser fan motor rated for? I'm gonna have to get over here and look. Ooh, it's blowing some serious heat out though. Um, I gotta get in there. It's allowed to run 2.1 amps for the condenser fan motor. We'll run in 1.5, so that's not bad. Um, we're gonna give it some time. You can see we have a really low suction saturation temperature at this point, but it's a fixed orifice metering device, so they take time to build up pressure. But our head pressure and the amount of heat coming out of that condenser is ridiculous. Clearly, you can see that it's dirty. Pretty confident we're gonna have to do a thorough cleaning on this guy. Um, get it going, it's probably what we're gonna have to do. But we still don't know what caused a fuse to blow. So let's get overall amps on the unit because we are under a high load right now. Overall amps is about 19 at the moment. It doesn't seem unreasonable. What is the whole unit's minimum circuit ampacity? 28.3 minimum circuit amps. So, well, I mean, it doesn't seem bad. I can switch to another leg because the condenser fan motor is single phase. So, um, two of the legs are gonna have higher current than one of the legs, so I don't know if I'm on other one. So far, yeah, see we're climbing in head pressure. This guy definitely needs to be clean. Look at that sub cooling. Super heat's off the chart. I wanna get a thermal imaging camera and have a look at that disconnect switch too to see if we have bad connections. In fact, let's come over here. Oh yeah, the knives are not pushing all the way back. They're barely making connection. So that disconnect probably needs some work. So I've got my thermal imaging camera right here and I'm looking at the number one, or the number three terminal, the lug. You can clearly see that that side is getting really, really hot. Number two is kind of getting hot, but number one's not hot at all. You can see where the pointer is. That's the lug, okay? See the lugs up top where the wires are going into them. So if we look, the green thing is lug one, green thing is lug two, green thing is lug three. So that fuse is getting hot and it's got a bad connection. So I'm curious if I take my insulated screwdriver and very carefully, again, you know, there's risks in this job and we have to be careful. So this is an insulated screwdriver. Let's make sure not to ground it out. Let's see if I can get this to push in. kind of pushing it. Not much though. Um, so it's just making a bad connection. We might temporarily be able to kind of clean up that contact where the knife is touching up in the top and see if we can get that to make a better connection maybe. Looking at Measure Quick, you can see our head pressure's off the chart. It's 100 degrees outside at eight in the morning. It's insane how hot it's gonna be today. Um, but we've got 140 degree saturation almost. now. You don't charge to this number, but a rule of thumb is on a refrigeration and an air conditioning system. For the most part, you never want to see more than 30 degrees condenser TD or 30 degrees condensing temp over ambient. So it's 100 degrees outside and we have 140 degree condensing temp. So we are 40 degrees over the ambient temperature. That is a no-no. But again, that is not a one stop you charge to that or anything like that. No, it's just one of the metrics that we look at, okay? 
Um, but then we can see our approach temperature. The unit, look at that temp split, that's insane. It must be pulling outside air because there's no way it's a 40 degree temp split return to supply. I'm curious about something. Let's look at toolbox, probe manager. Let's look at our temperature clamps. Outdoors 100, returns 91. So yeah, it must be pulling some outside air. Supplies 55. Um, 55 seems pretty decent for that. Okay, cool. So, um, I'm gonna shut this guy down and we're gonna clean this condenser. Super Eat's pretty good, considering. Uh, this is a target, uh, we use target Super Eat on this because it's a fixed orifice metering device. We're actually calling for 10 degrees Super Eat at the moment. We're right on the money. But, all right, let's clean this condenser and see what that does for us. Can't stress enough, you're gonna pre-wet the condenser. Get it nice and wet all sides. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna split this condenser today. I'm sure it needs it, but I've got too many calls. I'm not gonna, in order to split it, I'm gonna have to take the top off the unit. That's something that I'll probably come back for. But uh, we're gonna clean inside and outside with coil cleaner, get all around it. But yeah, you gotta give it a nice wet surface for the coil cleaner to kind of glide down. So that's why you wanna pre-wet it on all sides. As usual, I'm using the Viper Venom Pack. Um, in their gun because it gets better mixtures um now you know people might ask because i'm all about big picture like why am i not going being super thorough on this and pulling it apart and doing it all right because i'm busy <laughs> there's a time and the place right now i mean there's a time and a place to be super thorough and look at the big picture and be super you know every single time right now it is dead heat of summer we are putting fires out that is what we are doing we are getting equipment running to come back to do it right, basically. So I'm just doing my best as thorough as possible, right? But I don't have two hours to take this whole unit apart, pull the motor out, like deal with all that stuff right now. They've got more ACs down here too. So I'm like bouncing around. So getting in here, putting the coil cleaner on everywhere as best as possible. I already got the outside, so we're almost there. Spraying at a downward angle, trying not to get it in the motor or anything like that. And we're just, there's stuff coming out. We'll just get all sides. We'll rinse multiple times because this is a very corrosive cleaner. It etches the coil. So uh, why didn't I use the yellow? Because this coil is really dirty internally and I can't split it. So I need foaming action that's gonna push through. It's not ideal to use a brightener cleaner on stuff because it literally etches the coil, but this coil is already destroyed. You can see it's already has fin separation. You can see copper. Like this coil's done anyways, but yeah, we're just doing a good run. Put back together, I did my best to wash all the stuff away from the condenser, that way it doesn't suck back up. Filters are pretty dirty. I moved my air probe into here, so that way it gets a better reading. And I'm just gonna clean out that trap really quick since I have a hose, and then we're gonna turn it on and see how it's performing now. My iPad's about to die, but this thing's looking a lot better. We still have high superheat, high subcooling. Um, we might have a slight restriction in this thing. Airflow seems a little bit low, but we're looking a lot better. Temp split's still high. The unit has dirty filters, um, but a million times better. 130 degree saturation, and we have uh, 101 degree outside air. So, condenser's definitely damaged. It's very inefficient, but it's much better than it was. Customer's gonna be stoked. We're gonna wrap this one up, and uh, they're gonna have to consider replacing this unit. I mean, we could put a new condenser. Uh, if we do that, we would probably put a new evaporator too because you'd get new fixed orifice metering devices. Um, but I don't know if they wanna put that much money into this unit, so. That's it for this one. Sometimes it's just a little cleaning and love. Oh, last but not least, we gotta get this disconnect changed too because it's not making a good connection, but I think we're gonna be okay for now, so. Check this out. So I was getting ready to leave and I was like, you know, I should look at that contactor. I know it's kind of flashing, so be cautious about that, but contactor's really, really hot. And if you get in there and look, so if you guys can see this, it's all burnt inside there on that top. It's not making a good connection. There's no voltage drop, but it's a bad contactor too. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out that contactor. Still got a lot of work left to do this unit. Um, we are gonna still put a new disconnect on it too, but again, I'm not doing that today, but if I can swap this out, 
get them a little more life, maybe not blow a fuse again. That's the plan. So I swapped this out and I'm sitting here thinking right now, this is gonna be really easy to get rid of these wire nuts when we change that disconnect because we'll just bring the wire directly up into the contactors. Now, here's another thing. This wire's way too big. This is almost number two maybe. It's definitely, maybe six, but we'd be plenty fine with number eight on this because this is too big for that box lug. So what I'm thinking, I'm gonna actually change this blower relay really quick and I'm gonna put in a contactor with lugs because here's the problem. The, the final phase is double crimped with a slip-on connector right there. But if I get rid of that and put a contactor, then we could come in, coming out of the disconnect with number eight up directly into the contactors and call it a day. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this guy real quick, put in a contactor and then uh, yeah, we'll be good to go because this is just a two pull. Con uh, relay basically so easy peasy got rid of that so then that way this I separated them too and uh, we can bring the electrical directly up into the box lug and we'll be good to go so I just need to make sure I wired everything right should be color to color yeah and I'll make sure everything works correctly and then hopefully we'll be done with this one for now like I said my tablet died earlier so I uh, have had it charging this whole time. I actually had to go over and work on their makeup air unit over there. The the water pump went bad on it, so ran to Home Depot or Lowe's, picked up one of those. It's a bunch of little stuff that could have been caught if they were doing normal maintenances, but I guess that's life, right? If I wired it right, that blower should be spinning counterclockwise. When I turn this guy on, and nothing should blow up. One, two, three, please don't blow up. Blower's going in the right direction, so that's a plus. And compressor sounds correct. It's not running in the right or wrong direction, so we're good on that. So now I just gotta go set the time on the thermostat, because this particular thermostat, every time you power it down, it loses the time and then it won't start back up until you set the time. So that's why I had it jumped earlier. So I'll go do that and start cleaning up. Um, and then I got one more AC to look at. And then I got more calls after this. We are back. We're going to change this disconnect switch. The AC has been working ever since I got it running. So all's been well. So we're going to power it down and see if we can't get this thing replaced. And we are going to eliminate all this baloney, the wire nuts and stuff. And we're going to go directly from the disconnect right into the contactor since I uh, redid that indoor blower motor relay. So it shouldn't be too difficult. It's just tear everything down, get power shut off, and then... We'll start wiring everything back in. All right, we are ready to turn on power. So we opened up the under blower section so we can see the phase rotation. Um, the other thing, you know, we eliminated all the wires. You can see I was able to make the ground. I had one of the right connectors to go right to the ground spot. Uh, we're going right into the contactors now with the wire. It's secured up, so it's not going to rub out on anything. Unfortunately, this is the only disconnect I can get. Right now, we are having a heck of a time with disconnect switches. This one, they don't make anymore, I guess, or whatever. This is the old Siemens 60 amp, and this is the new one, and they, they stink. There's not enough room in these things. They're way too tight. The wiring's tight. I mean, I was able to get it to go, but I like some more space to be able to work around in these things. Um, I was using GE disconnects, and I was picking those up, but I can't get GE disconnects right now either for some reason. So this is kind of a pain in the butt, um, having to deal with this. I'm still trying to find a good disconnect brand. I, I like the fused ones and I like the non-fused for certain situations too. Um, but regardless, we got it all wired in, directly in, um, you know, all good. So now it's a matter of turning it on and checking phase rotation. So what I did was we opened the indoor blower section, but I disconnected R going downstairs. So the thermostat's not gonna turn this guy on. So one, two, three, please don't blow up. Okay, we're good there. Now we're just gonna bump the blower and it's going in the right direction. Now to you, it might look like it's spinning backwards, but it's going the right direction. We're gonna bump the contactor. The compressor sounds correct too. If it was phased incorrectly, that compressor would be making a ridiculously loud knocking sound. You don't wanna let it run like that because it can damage the compressor. 
And then if you run the indoor blower motor backwards, it's obviously not gonna move the air it's supposed to move. But we are phased in the right direction. Everything is good. We can turn it off. I'll hook up the thing and then we'll go downstairs and make sure the unit comes back on and everything else is working good with it. And we're all back on and running. Everything's good. So customers happy. They've been happy. It's been about a week ish week and a half maybe two weeks since i was here last everything's been good um one of the downsides like i don't like this disconnect because it's so much smaller you can see that one's nice and big um i can't put the spare fuses in there there's no room like if you put them in there they're gonna fall out instantly when you open the door so i just put the spare fuses over here which kind of sucks because when you're on the roof and you need fuses it's really easy on my roofs to just walk over to another disconnect open it up and be like boom now you got to take the panels off to the AC and get inside, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, certainly a lot of other stuff on this unit. It needs a condenser coil. Condenser fan motor has the wrong uh, motor in there, which is working, but the wires are sticking out the top. Like just, you know, but we're not just going to change everything just because it looks like crud. But if we ever get an opportunity, I'll definitely change that condenser fan motor. You know, if it starts acting up, yeah, I'll be glad to put an OEM one in there so that way it fits like it's supposed to. But yeah, that's it. This is working. We'll tell the customer to keep an eye on it. I had a lot of these service calls throughout this summer. Um, it's it's obviously not, uh, this was filmed way earlier in the summer, right? Uh, it is currently, well, actually I think it was, I think the video was shot in September. But anyways, it is October 23rd, 2024 right now. Um, while I'm doing this real quick though, I wanted to say thank you very much. Um, I got some really, I got a package at my PO box and it was very nice. It was from, uh, Megan over at mechanical environments. Uh, she sent me, uh, a hoodie. A, it's a pullover hoodie. Really nice one. And a t-shirt. Really cool. Uh, I really like this hoodie too. Cause it's really lightweight. It's really nice. And their logo really pops, right? Uh, they do mechanical work for uh some of the work they do is for like pot grows and stuff so that's why they have the pot leaf on the back but i thought it's a it's a really nice gesture that she sent me that she had purchased some merch for me and then um i sent her i think a bonus sweater bonus hoodie and maybe a beanie i can't remember anyways because we're trying to clear out some stock and uh, it was very nice she sent me a nice package back with a shirt and a hoodie so i thought that was very nice thank you very much megan uh and forgive me i don't know your husband's name but uh, that was really awesome of you two to do that. So again, thank you very much. That was really cool. So uh, this video, obviously, it was crazy busy summer. And uh, that day, um, ironically, the funny thing is, is as I'm filming this right now, my last video was the second Apprentice series. And it was going back and rebuilding the swamp cooler that I mentioned or evaporative cooler that I mentioned in this video. So this day, I got a call in their kitchen AC, their office AC. One of the dining room AC is like it was multiple issues. And uh, it's just kind of funny how it worked out that I released my apprentice series video where we were rebuilding that makeup air unit or evaporative cooler. And then here we are, you know, the next video that I decided to release was this one. So I shot a bunch of this footage over the summer and I'm not obviously going to release every single air conditioning video back to back. So I've just been kind of holding on them and just kind of slowly as we're slowing down right now, I'm just going through my footage from this summer and just kind of going, Oh yeah, I could film that. It's kind of gives you flashbacks though, too. Like this weekend was insane. I was so busy this weekend, but regardless, I do my best when I'm on these calls. I I'm not perfect. Okay. But this was one of those situations where we were just putting fires out, right? You know, literally just going over there and just being like, we're going to get it going. We're going to get it going. And then we come back and we clean everything up later. And that's what we did. I went out there. I diagnosed a failed disconnect switch and a contactor that was overheating. And then I went ahead and uh, upgraded or replaced the contactor and, and replaced the indoor fan relay and went ahead and put in a contactor so that way I could clean up the main power coming into the unit. It's really common on these installs because carrier would ship these units with like a 24 inch lead coming off the contactor. And instead of people, um, for whatever reason, that's what just people did was they just wire netted to those leads that were sticking out. And I just never liked those because over time the wire nuts get brittle, they overheat and it's just kind of silly. So I upgraded it, put another contactor in there, ran the three phase wire into the box lugs. So that way we're terminating right at the box lugs. We eliminated that giant wire they had coming from the disconnect switch to the unit because there was no reason on a 35 amp unit to have, I don't know, I, I mentioned in the video, it might've been number two. I don't know, maybe it was number four, or number six, but still it was just way too big. Okay, we came back in with number eight uh, from 
the disconnect load side to the unit because there's no reason why we number eight wouldn't handle that. Dude, it's perfectly fine. So we did that. We put the disconnect in. I also mentioned that I was having a hard time getting disconnects this summer. Uh, I finally got my source to get me the GE disconnects again. They were just out of stock for some reason for a while, but I got a pretty good stockpile of them now. Now I'm not going to have as many disconnects to change. That's how it works. But anyway, so I got, you know, a hold of my GE disconnects again. And, you know, I, I liked the old Siemens ones, the ones that I took out of this because it was big. Uh, but for whatever reason, they're not, they don't got those ones anymore. All they have is these cheap ones. I know that Siemens had an issue uh, last year or something like that. And that's when we started to notice the supply houses didn't have the good disconnects anymore. I don't know what happened though. I heard some rumors, something about some, an issue at the plant or something like that, but who knows, regardless, using the tools that we have helps us to be better technicians. Okay. Just because I have a thermal imaging camera doesn't mean it does my job for me. It just helps me to understand. I already had a hunch that the disconnect was a problem grabbing the thermal imaging camera gave me a better indication. Looking at the compressor contactor with the thermal imaging camera gave me a better indication. Even though I saw that the contactor looked burnt, being able to visualize things with the thermal imaging camera definitely helps. Using software, uh, I use an app, Measure Quick. I have no affiliation with them, okay? But uh, I like that because it consolidates all the data and just puts everything at my fingertips. You know, it's funny, I was going through my comments today and someone mentioned, hey, you know, they were they were kind of criticizing me because I didn't check this. I didn't check temperature split from evaporator or from return to supply. I didn't check outdoor air temperature. But that person is a little ignorant and they were a little misinformed because I was using measure quick. And while I realize that sometimes when I pull up that app, you guys are just, you know, again, I'm not making these videos assuming that everybody's going to get a step by step tutorial. Right. So sometimes you're just hearing me talk. And I open up measure quick and I have all my probes on the system and my probes give me return and supply temperature. They give me outdoor air temperature. They give me everything. Right. And, uh, I personally use the field piece job link probes. Um, and that, uh, thermal imaging camera was a Hick micro M 30. Maybe I think is what I have. It's way overkill for what we do, but it's a nice camera. Uh, you can pick all those up. A lot of the tools you see me using in my videos, the field piece SC 480 clamp meter that I use, you can pick them up from truetechtools.com If you're interested in doing so, I have an affiliate program set up with them. Uh, if you use my affiliate code, big picture, I get a small commission. You get an 8% discount on majority of their items on their website. And it's a great way to help support the channel. So when you see these tools and you think like, Hey, I wonder what that is. Go check them out at true tech tools. Okay. Anyways. So back onto the video. Um, I try my best. I'm not perfect. And I try to remember to explain things, you know, as best as possible. But again, you have to understand my priority is the service call. The filming is just a bonus, right? And really, it's only intended for my employees. But obviously, as time has gone on, I started these in 2017. But as time has gone on, um, they've become training for my employees, but also videos that, you know, edutainment, I guess, is someone mentioned that to me the other day, my videos are edutainment, right? Educational entertainment, that, that's about right. That's, that's a pretty good, accurate representation of what my videos are is edutainment. So it is what it is. I'm done ranting. Thank you so very much. I already mentioned true tech tools. If you're interested in them, go to my web or go to the true tools.com. Big picture, one word, 8% discount on majority of the items. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, you can go to my website, hvacrvideos.com. We got hats, beanies, all that good stuff on there. Um, actually, we don't have beanies right now, but beanies will be coming soon. I have a whole restock. I just got to take new photos, but we do have hats available on the website. We still have a few t-shirts left. Uh, we still have a few hoodies left, but we are phasing the t-shirts and the hoodies out. We're just going to stick with the hats from this point forward and stickers and stuff. So, um, you can also, if you're interested in doing so, support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel memberships. There's links in the show notes of this video on how to get to that. But you know the easiest way to support this channel is literally just do what you're doing right now. Watch the video from beginning to end. That is the easiest way to support this channel. It doesn't cost you a thing except for a little bit of your time, right? Thank you so very much. I really appreciate you. Give me some feedback down in the comments. Hey, when I address criticism, it's not that I'm mad, okay? I'm totally open to criticism, to critiquing, to information. Give it to me. Don't be rude about it, but give it to me. I'm, I, maybe I can learn something. 
I'm always looking to learn something new. So let me know. If I missed anything in the comments, if I'm not answering your comments, sometimes they get buried in there, shoot me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate you, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.